Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. This video has been sponsored by NetEase, and I hope that you're all enjoying the game as much as I am. Now, Infinite Lagrange is a very complex game, there is a lot going on, and it's very easy to get overwhelmed early on because of just how many systems there are around you. You may not know exactly what you're doing, where you're going, or why you're doing the things you're doing. So that's what we're going to look at in today's video. I'm going to talk to you about how to survive your first day in Infinite Lagrange. We're going to look at what you need to do to get the very best start in the game, and an idea of how to progress outward from there. Now, if you are just starting in the game and you've got questions about it, of course, do check out the Infinite Lagrange official Discord. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And of course, the Catskull Discord as well has channels where you can talk about Infinite Lagrange and ask all kinds of questions there. I will also be running a series of tutorials based in this game, similar to how I've done the Catskull Academy for Eve Echoes. So do stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed if you're interested in seeing all of that. That said and done though, let's jump right into surviving your first day in Infinite Lagrange. Now when you first load up the game, you'll basically just get a tap to start thing here, um, and then it'll go through a choice of server, but because I've obviously got bases set up on other servers already, I need to tap on where it uh, says the server name here, and go into the Lagrange network. Now you'll see that every server in Infinite Lagrange is named after a star system in the Milky Way, and as far as I'm aware, these are all genuinely star systems. Um, obviously I haven't memorised all of them, so someone could prove me wrong on that, but certainly most of them seem to be named after genuine star systems that we know about. So, I've been invited to come and join some friends on their server, so that's exactly what I'm going to do, and we're going to talk about how to best get set up on a new server in order to do so. Now, when you first join the game, you'll get this list here of different systems in the Lagrange network. These are basically the different servers that you can join. The lower the number, the older the server. And now, the key point to like, note here is that old servers are obviously going to have established alliances. This means if you want to jump into a server where there's a lot of people who know exactly what they're doing, then jumping into a low number server is the best way to get started, but do expect them to have a higher server population and thus less space, more competition for resources, that kind of thing there. The higher the number, the newer the server, and NetEase are opening new Lagrange network nodes all the time. Like, literally since I started playing, I think we've had five or six of these added into the game. I think Libra EU was the latest one when I started. We now have all the way down to Cepheus here at the bottom. So basically, you can pick a server that you fancy, and if you go for those higher number ones, it's going to be less established, you're going to have fewer people around, but that gives you an opportunity to sort of get your own foothold in the game. I'd recommend going for sort of a middling number. But for today's video, I'm going to be joining some friends on V1207 Sagittarius. So, we're going to tap onto that, and we're going to hit enter, and load into the game itself. Now, this is where you will get an absolutely epic introductory sequence, and if this is your first time playing the game, I do wholeheartedly recommend that you sit through this and get a feel for exactly what's going on. You'll be able to tap onto different things and learn all about the background of the world and different ships and all this kind of thing as you're preparing yourself to go forward. For the purposes of this video though, I'm just going to hold this to skip it, and we're going to go straight through into the meat itself, but again, I do wholeheartedly recommend that you watch through that to get an idea of what's going on. Now here, again, we get the sailing log as we're going through. Here are our first three ships. Everyone who starts in Infinite Lagrange starts with three FG-300 frigates, generic multi-role frigates. In fact, you can see here, it's just announced that on screen. And we can tap here and see what all of this is, get a little bit of information. And again, you can kind of tap onto all different things around and learn what is going on in this area whilst you prepare to begin your journey. Again, it's pretty epic, well worth watching, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to hold to skip through this. I've watched it three times now, I don't need to watch it again and make you guys go through all of this. Eventually, here we are, we arrive at the city of Antontus. Uh -huh. And we get our clearance now to jump into basically our system um, that we're going to go into. So again, I am going to jump ahead on this part to when we actually land into our system and we can start building and actually playing the game. So first of all, we have a faction registration here. So I'm going to pick here. Our name is going to be Catskull Incorporated. There we go. Maximum of 15 characters. Can't have the full stop. Okay, so we're going to take that out. Catskull Inc. There we go. 
design your emblem. Now there's a very limited amount of emblems to start with here. They all have a little bit of uh, like backstory to them, like this is the glory one. Whatever I see and wherever I go, it's all mine for the taking. Mars Fung, first commander of the Amazon Corps, etc. I quite like this one because it looks a little bit like a cat skull. Um, and we're going to stick that with, I think, we'll try yellow. And for the background, again, there's only a few to start with here. I'm going to go for the purple one there. Cool. That gives us our idea. And we're going to sign what's called the Dawn Accord, which is basically the contract that gets you into the game. And you start off with three FG300 multi-role frigates, 100,000 metal, 5,000 crystal, 4,000 deuterium, and 5,000 UE coins. Now, basically, don't worry too much about what that all means. That will be explained later. They're basically the different resources that you're going to gather in the game. You get a load of those to start with, so you can start building things and upgrading. You'll also have blueprints to build uh, all different types of utility ships and the FG300 multi-role uh, multi frigate. So we're going to tap register, leave everything ticked, go through, sign the Dawn Accord, and come through. You'll then have your little uh, icon, and in we go. Again, we're going to hold to skip. It's worth noting that you can change your icon completely freely as you play through the game as well. In fact, doing certain missions will unlock new backgrounds and new icons for you as well, so you can upgrade and show off to everyone else in your server exactly what's going on. Finally then, we come to our select destination screen, and it's at this point that I need to just double check which server it is, uh, which region it is, that my friends are based in, so that I can join them. If you're looking to join someone specifically, again, just double check that you are in the same region as them, otherwise, just pick any single one of them, it doesn't really matter. I mean, heck, if you like the fact that this has a planet called Typhon, you could go into region 3 or region 5, so you start near that. Just basically, kind of pick whatever the heck you fancy. Now for me, fortunately, because of the cool name of the planet Typhon, it is indeed Region 3 that my friends are in, so I'm just going to jump into this one here. Commander, are you sure you want to anchor your base in Region 3? Yes, just basically a quick double check there. And we're going to jump from the Pioneer system to our new system, confirm, and then in we go. It's now just going to load in one final time. Um, cool little animation and graphic here. Um, finally, as our frigates jump through the gate, through the Lagrange network to this new system. Here we are. We have now arrived in our star system, our new base, which as I said, in this case is Sagittarius. And when you start, you're going to have your base followed by sort of a square around you, which is kind of your operation zone. Now you can see here, if we tap view, just follow the tutorial and the instructions for the most part. Do stop and read through everything. I know it's tempting sometimes just to go, oh, exciting new game, and start slapping that screen with your thumb um, like it's going out of fashion, but you're gonna miss all the text and have no real concept of what's going on. So first things first then, we're introduced to our base. Obviously this is the center of our operations in a new system. You're going to learn, first off, how to construct different parts. Now, the base is divided into three sections. From left to right, there is a central district, which is kind of like your command part, uh, portion. Upgrading the central district will have things like here, you've got the fleet command center. You'll add in things like airspace defenses, the ability to build mining outposts, that kind of thing all comes under central district. You then have the port district. This is where things that are do to do with storage tend to be. So you'll get warehouses that allow you to increase the amount of metal, deuterium, or UE coins, etc. that um, you can store. The increase, uh, you'll increase the amount of those that you can store, each of those different resources, and you'll have ports that you can upgrade as well so that you can store more ships in a fleet. Basically, we'll talk about that more in a moment, but the bigger your port, obviously, the more ships you can have, and you are capped by the size of your port. Finally, on the right hand side then we have the industrial district. This is where you make things and you're going to start off here by building a capital shipyard. Capital shipyard is basically just the shipyard that allows us to build, in this case, frigates um, and small utility ships. That's all we're going to be able to build early on. Later on, we will have the ability to upgrade um, the capital shipyard to build destroyers um, and other ships as well. 
Now you see that we do get the option to speed things up here. These speed up it uh, items are a five minute upgrade time reduction. And basically, if you use one of these, it will reduce the timer by five minutes. If the timer is less than five minutes, well, it completes it. Now, don't worry too much about the speed ups. They are generated by your base. Um, you will get a certain amount of these daily, depending on the level of your base and your production facilities. Um, so you can use them and just know that you will get more back at times. I like to save them. Um, until there's something really big that I want to complete at sort of a quick time. Um, but it is worth noting that, like with other things, there is a cap on the amount of those that you can actually hold onto. Um, therefore, you do need to use them, otherwise you'll stop producing them. Now it's going to teach us how to build ships. So we come into our capital ship, uh, capital ship shipyard here, and we're going to build an engineer-type small utility ship. Now it's worth noting that you can build multiple ships from the same shipyard, um, but they have to be of the same type. So you can put into a queue like three or four of those small utility ships as long as your port's big enough to accommodate, um, but you will eventually get more queues that allow you to build more ships. In fact, if you look at the bottom left here, where it's flashing expanse, there's a plus and then a load of little padlocks. Those are your ship building queues. The first three of which are your capital ships, so they can build frigates, destroyers, cruisers, battle cruisers, etc. And you'll unlock three of those as time goes on. The other side are for aircraft, so building stealth bombers, corvettes, um, fighters, that kind of thing there. On the other side, on the other side of construction, you'll see we have the idle construction queues. There are two of those that allow you to be building new facilities, like upgrading your docks and things like that. Anyway, so let's go back to the Expanse view. The Expanse view is this big overworld here. Um, you can see we've got our operation area. If we tap on something within that, you can start issuing commands. And the first thing, obviously, we need to do is to start issuing a mining fleet. So we're just going to go in there with a rapid formation, create a fleet. You'll find that actually, for the most part, I still use rapid formations for mining because you only send one ship at a time and off out it goes. Now here, if we hit view, you get the really pretty graphics of exactly what's going on. You see that here the utility ships send out these little mining UAVs, which then drill into the planet, built that uh, planet, asteroid, sorry, drill into the asteroid, collect rocks, and bring them back to the storage area. Now, as we are going to talk about in a future video, you can upgrade blueprints, and um, you'll be able to upgrade how fast those UAVs work, um, and you'll also be able to upgrade um, the storage of these ships as well. Now, obviously, this is space. Not everyone is a friendly little happy-go-lucky bunny um, who's out there to just mine and do their own thing. There are, of course, pirates out here, and you can theoretically be one of these yourself. So, we've got a privateer fleet has been spotted, now we need to go back to the Expanse, and from the Expanse, we're going to have a look at these. So we can actually see there's a privateer fleet there, denoted by the little red arrow, or triangle, or whatever you want to call it. So we need to build a fleet. First of all, we're going to confirm our new operation here. Operations are basically areas in which you can do things. You can operate inside the square around your base completely freely, with impunity. But anything outside of your base requires you to build an operation. And if you look at the bottom of the screen where it says create operation, you'll see that I have six of these available early on. And as you upgrade your base, you will upgrade the amount of operations you can place. If you want to do something and you don't have, an op uh, don't have any spare operations, you either need to delete a previous operation or you can't do that thing until the other until you get some new operations. Anyway, so we're going to tap on, uh, tap on the Wandering Privateer, and we're going to hit Attack. Now again, we don't have a fleet set up, so we're just going to go into Rapid Formation, and we're going to either tap on these one by one, or just hit Select All, Create a Fleet, and then send it off out into combat. Now here you'll see that my FG300s are now going to undock from my base. You don't get these little animations every time, so enjoy them the first time, just to get an idea of how pretty this game really can be. Off go the FG300 multi-role frigates, into combat with that little privateer fleet, and we'll talk now about how combat works briefly. So, when we get there, there they are, they warp in, Fleet 2 is entering battle. So it's worth noting you've got a couple of different things on screen here. First of all, in the top left, you can see what the enemy ships are and their health. Then we have our fleet there in the bottom where we can have a look at the different rows, etc. Uh, front row takes hits first before middle row, before back row usually. So tanky things tend to go into the front row. You don't get to choose. The ships are assigned their roles. Finally, at the bottom right, we have the ship list, which brings up your own fleet and you can see how much damage you're taking. You can also actually tap onto these and it will zoom in on the individual ships as well. Now, obviously, this is the first battle. You're going to kick the absolute daylights out of this little privateer fleet. They're just a little scouting there, 
coming in to check and see whether or not um, you are capable of handling this and they're going to send more later on and you will get more. Now you'll see that the default of an operation when you send for an attack is that you fly out to the target. Once you have completed what you're doing in that operation, you will automatically return. But it's worth noting that returning back to base, as you can see here, there goes the fleet warp drive back into base, boom, does not clear the operation. If you're done with that operation, you do have to manually destroy it unless you are calling a retreat and then the game will give you the option to cancel that. Anyway, so we're now going to have a look at how to use blueprints to get new and more exciting ships. So we take this part here, which is part of the research tree, um, the research button, sorry, and you'll see that we get a whole new screen of stuff here. Now, these little square icons are weapon blueprints. You can just tap on these and bam, you unlock them and you have to unlock in order. Now, you can go straight for the AC721, uh, AC but it is a destroyer, and you'll notice that our shipyard does not have the capability yet to build destroyers. As such, I would recommend going along the top branch here first to the FG300 recon type, and we're going to open this one up, and you'll see there that it's got a two-hour timer. If you have some Proxima coins, you can tap here and spend those. And if you don't have any Proxima coins, you can use real-world money to buy yourself um, some of the Chew coins. There, at these costs here, you do get a bonus the first time you buy those. Um, I don't think there's much need to here. I would go along this top line here um, until we hit the FG300, uh, the armor type there. By the time you hit the KCCPV2, um, that is a cruiser. So again, stop there, then go down to the bottom line, unlock the destroyers, and then look at going up here to the AC721 destroyer here, which is an aircraft one as well. Um, you'll find cruisers are a lot later, so you want to uh, start with frigates, then unlock destroyers, then unlock corvettes, then unlock cruisers. And you can tell what they are by these little icons there. As you sort of see where I'm tapping, um, that little sort of triangle -like icon there denotes that it's a cruiser. The one here denotes like triangle with a line under it, denotes that it's a destroyer. The one that is just a straight triangle is a frigate. And along the bottom here, this one that's sort of a conical triangle with a line under it is a uh, corvette. There are others as well, like battle cruisers, um, carriers, and uh, uh, fighters as well, but we'll talk about those in a future video. Now, there are other things that we can look at here, but I don't really want to talk about these too much. Um, the Dawn funding scheme is kind of like a battle pass. As you do stuff in-game, you start earning rewards along the top tracks. This does include black market tech files, which are useful for research, so keep an eye on that. If you do want to sign the additional version, um, there is a price you pay to get the bottom line of the, uh, the tracker here standard procedure um, for any kind of battle pass. If you play games at all online, you should be familiar with the battle pass by now. We also have the Dawn Financial Plan, which is actually a really interesting system. I quite like this. If you were to buy a load of Chew Coin or, and then turn them into Proxima Coins, the purple one, or you've unlocked a load of Proxima Coins through day-to-day -day gameplay, you can actually purchase what's called a Dawn Financial Plan. Um, and basically you pay the 600 and you'll get 1500 in total um, over um, a 15-day period. Same here with the other one, the 320% return, you'll start by paying a thousand Proxima coins. Every day you'll log in um, to get, I think it's uh, three, uh, 105 or something coins there, um, and you'll get those every day for 30 days to give you the full 320 um, income. It's just a way to multiply your money up if you're willing to be patient. It's a pretty cool way of doing it. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the store. I have got a video planned that talks about how you unlock and upgrade ships. That will talk more about the store and what's going on here. So for now, let's ignore that one. We're going to leave that frigate um, researching and come back out to our overview. Now here it says, it's been detected that privateer fleets created operations around our base. This is the red operations that you can see here. Like our operations are grey, other players are orange, red is what uh, the NPC enemies are going to do. And it tells you here that there, that basically means there's going to be a privateer fleet arriving there at some point. So just be careful if you're sending miners out to an area like that. You are going to have to keep an eye on that and make sure you send some uh, support out as well if you're attacked. Anyway, let's go back into the base now, because we need to upgrade our facilities and have a look at how we're going to be able to defend against this. Now here we're going to have a look at quests to start off with, because this is going to give you an idea of how you should be upgrading your base. And there's more to it than this, but if you're following the quests, you can't really go all that wrong. Basically, do these things. Once it's done, 
tap the icon and get the reward, which is really useful early on. And if you're not sure what that is, so for example here, build the facility to unlock frigate production. Okay, yeah, it says frigate dockyard reaches level one, but just in case you're not sure, you can tap on the arrow. It'll take you through to the construction screen and basically say, this is the thing. So we're going to tap on that. We're going to build it. It's going to take three seconds to build. So no point using a speed up. Bam, we now have a frigate dockyard. Now that is going to upgrade the speed at which we can build frigates, reduce their cost slightly as well, which is really nice. Now we're going to go to the generic port and we're going to upgrade that because we need more command points. Basically, the size and constitution of your fleet is based on your command points. So for example, a small engineering vessel is 10 industrial command points. So you can see I only have 10 industrial command points, which means I can only have one of those out. Here, I'm going to take our military port up to 15 command points. I'm going to speed this one up because it is a five minute one. There we go. We can go back through to the mission screen now and complete both of these quests and get some more deuterium, some more metal and some more crystal. And now we can go to build more ships. So at the top of the screen, you can ignore the text here, build an FG300 to improve the combat power. If you look at the top of your screen, you see it says military port 9 out of 15. Now, the reason it's already at 9 is because we have three FG300 multi-role type combat frigates already in our port. You can see, if we now look at the multi-role type here on the right-hand side, it's got an orange 3 in the top right of its icon. That is how many command points it requires to have that ship. So then if we look at the engineer type, you'll see that again that is an industrial command point of 10. The medium utility ship at the bottom there requires 20 industrial or resource port um, command points as well. So we're going to go for the FG300 here. Obviously, we've got 9 out of 15. These are worth 3 each. We could theoretically build 2 of these. Um, the game's not going to let us do that. We're going to use prefab modules, which kind of like speed up, but for ships to build one of those. Um, it's worth noting again that the prefab modules are produced by your base, so don't worry about spending them, you will get more over time. Finally then, in regards to this set of missions, it's going to talk about how to get blueprint experience through combat and upgrade blueprint level, so we now need to go and fight another battle. So we're going to go for the Wandering Privateer, and you'll see that because it's outside of our operation, we need to put another one down. But if we put another one down with an overlap, it actually becomes part of the same operation. This is sometimes good, sometimes bad. Um, it can be annoying sometimes that if you want to delete an operation, you have to delete all of the connected parts, um, which means you might end up accidentally sending something home that you don't want to send home. Um, but ultimately... <sighs> It's part and parcel. It means you get a better operation area and you can easily send ships anywhere within that. Now here as well we've got our little help function and we're going to scroll through that because it's not important for this time. Same here we have the personal function down here with missions and we can fill that one in there. Now and I know we're kind of flipping through this at mad speed. So there we are, we've now completed the chapter 1 rewards on the left hand side, we've got a whole new load of missions, and I don't know if you spotted in that, but there was a new blueprint box as well that we will go through in time. Now it's going to say complete more missions to gain more rewards, so we're just going to kind of do all of this stuff, and now the main tutorial is open, and you're now free to tap around and have a look at everything you fancy, which is pretty sweet, because that now means I can actually get on with talking about this video in full, and see how we do. So there we are, we've got the little info there as well. Worth noting that if you do join the Discord, do it through the game, and that way you will get some free resources and that that you can use to, you know, obviously build ships, etc. Now, obviously, our quests are flashing at the top here, which is the game's way of saying, hey, check these out and make sure you do these. And absolutely, those are something you should be doing. You should be looking at those quests and seeing which ones you need to complete. It's a great way to just to give a basic direction to how you want to upgrade your um, your base, um, your fleet, etc. to get an idea of just gener general progression in Infinite Lagrange. Now, we've had a look here at the Expanse, and obviously we can zoom in and we can move around. Here we've got another player, this Temriak. There is an orange player, that means it's another player, but not from the same union as us. We can, of course, tap on unions down here, and we can join a union. We can have a look at all the different ones here. Now, the friends that I want to play with here are Ascended Legends, so I'm actually going to apply to join them now. Now, it's worth noting as well that joining a union gives you friends to play with. It means they can come to your defense if you're attacked um, by other players, etc. And as we have a look around, you can see all kinds of crazy stuff here going on. 
Um, actually, if we zoom all the way out, you'll see there's an awful lot of space here to discover with new different cities, new regions, um, loads of stuff. And wherever you are, once you're out here, you can always tap in the bottom left and it'll take you straight back to your base of operations. If you tap in the top right here as well, it'll take you straight to the fully zoomed out version. And there's a load of stuff here along the bottom, which we will talk about in future videos about what these all actually mean and what they do. We'll have a look at sort of the UI um, in a future video. For now, though, the important part is going to be in regards to our base. Now, having just applied to join a union, if these guys accept me, I'm currently sitting in the middle of space on my own. I could be nowhere near where they need to be. This is where we're going to have a look at our base, because later on, as we upgrade this, once it hits level 4, we have the Outpost Command Center. This allows us to build outposts and you can then relocate your base to those outposts. Rushing to level four is absolutely a good plan. So how do you rush to level four? Well, scroll down to level two, tap on expand, and it'll tell you which things here you need to build. I need to have the capital shipyard upgraded to at least level four. I need the generic port upgraded to at least level three and the warehouse upgraded to level four. Then I can upgrade to uh, the level two base. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And if you can't remember what they are, again, you can tap onto these and it'll take you across there. And we can just go bam, upgrade. I'm gonna leave that one there. And then once it's through, we're gonna upgrade it again. And I'm going to leave that one running because it's only five minutes and I want to save my uh, my points a bit more at this point. There we go. We're going to upgrade that one. That's going to be a 10 minute one. Uh, capital Shipyard here. That was the other one. You can also see as well that they do actually have the little bars here. Like the Capital Shipyard one, it's got an orange bar and then a one out of five. The one out of five is how many times it can be upgraded. The orange bars show that it is a key part to upgrading to the next level. So 100% that capital shipyard one is one we're going to go for. So actually, you know what? I am going to speed these up a little bit. We're going to put two of those because we've got plenty of these to spend. Um, so we're going to do that there and start upgrading our base. Now, we've got the generic port leveled up to the point that it needs to be leveled up to. Let's get the, up, uh, the capital shipyard all the way up as well. There we are. And again. And again, because this needs to be a level five one. There we go, that is now a level 5 capital shipyard, that's fully done, and now we have the warehouse that needs upgrading as well, so let's just do that. Yeah, I think that's high enough that we need, oh no it is 4 out of 5, yeah, 4 out of 5, that's all we need, it's got the bottom there, 7 out of 7, uh, 4 out of 4 at the bottom of the screen, we can now scroll down, go to expand, and bam, we can dump all of our resources into expanding. Now you cannot speed this up, that is going to take 40 minutes, no matter what you do. So, at this point, it's worth having a look and see if is there anything else here that you can be, like, building in the meantime. Um, now, the Frigate Dockyard, for example, you can see if I tap on this, it's going to increase um, how quickly I build frigates and how quickly I repair them. But it's not overly important at this point in time. It's something we can come back to later. I'd rather hold on to the resources. Same with the Utility Ship Dockyard. It's just how fast you build things. The Generic Port is a nice one to upgrade in the meantime because it means we can have more ships. And I'm just going to leave that running now because I don't want to spend and um, all of those speed ups. I'm going to save those for once we hit the next area because these have now like 10 minutes on them, um, whereas this is going to take 40. So I, anything that's less than 40, I kind of want to synchronize so that when these come through here, I can start upgrading the level two areas um, and working towards doing level three. Rushing to level four is absolutely something you want to do early on. I'd also have a look now at what we have here. Um, I'm going to build another couple of the uh, multi-role frigates and we're going to speed those up using the construction blocks so that we have these because what I want to talk about briefly here um, I just want to check my fleet has returned yes it has so I can now zoom out and I can cancel that operation because I don't need it if we know now go back into the base we can go on to create fleet here at the bottom it's going to give us a little bit of a tutorial but hey that's what I'm here for to show you now now, when you have a look here, you can see, as I said, we've got our six different frigates. We may not want all of those in one fleet. We might want two different fleets, so we can do two things side by side. You can go select all, but we're going to hit rapid formation, and we're going to pick three of these, create a fleet, and give it a name. And I do genuinely recommend giving fleets names. It gets confusing when you've got fleet one, fleet two, fleet three, and you're like, oh my goodness, what is even going in those? Um, so I tend to have like two fleets 
um, doing their own thing. I name them for different things, like assault fleets are ones that I'm sending out to um, take out pirates. I have like defense fleet, I occasionally have recon fleets for scouting, etc. So anyway, once we're on the fleet page here, we can see what we have in it and where those form in the middle, front or back rows. Now it's worth paying attention to that because if everything's in the middle row there, what are going to get shot at first? You may want to have some ships in the front row and the first one of those you're likely to find is the armoured type of the FG300 which is a very useful starting frigate, very tanky useful for sort of getting off the ground. Now I'm going to complete all of these missions as well because you see I'm getting a lot of resources from those and working my way towards the chapter 2 completion. Now I need to get blueprint experience through combat and upgrade blueprint levels. Again we're going to talk about that more in our sort of how to get new ships and upgrade them. What I am going to do here though is create a new operation and we're going to scroll through that and you'll see that we can move the operation around and I'm actually going to do this in a way that I get all four fleets of these in. There's a level 1, a level 2, and two level 4s. Now, actually, we're going to come out for a second, because I want to know which ones of these are the level 4s, because I don't want to be fighting those yet. There's a level 1. There's a level 4. So, oh, crikey, the level 4s are all actually pretty closely clumped together there. Let's have a look on this side. Were there any other ships here? Yes, we've got one here. Oh, that's a level 4 as well. Just be mindful of the level of different ships. That's a level six. Oh, goodness, we don't want to go anywhere near that one just yet. Not with just, you know, three frigates. Okay, so we've got a level two here, and we've got a level one there. So I'm going to attack the level one, and I'm going to set up that operation in such a way that we get both of those level ones together there. Now, straight up, we are going to attack this. That's level four. That's level four. Ignore that one. We're going to attack this level one here, and I'm going to send Assault 2 to do that one. This was the other level 4, this was the other level 1, so I've com level 2, sorry. I've completely miffed up how I'm supposed to be doing those operations, but I am going to keep those disconnected so I can clear them one by one later on. And we're going to send the assault fleet in on that one. Now, you'll see that as we scroll in and look at this fleet here, you'll see it's got a 2 minute 30 odd second um, flight time, then it will engage in combat. So we can do more stuff in the meantime here. And if we tap on this other icon, sorry, here next to the quest icon, this is the events page. And this is where, again, you want to join Facebook and join the Discord. Even if you don't actually do anything, you can just tap on that and then come straight back out. And it will give you the 50 Proxima coins, which is well worth doing. Same with the Dawn documentary. Cool way of getting some information about the game. The Eris blueprint, I can tell you from experience, this is well worth grabbing. It's a, like a pound, 99 pence, however much it, that is in dollars, like $1.21 or whatever. If you have a little bit of money to splash in the game, grab the Eris 1 blueprint. This thing is amazing. It's great fun, but don't worry too much about it early on because you cannot build it until you have the destroyer function. Finally, you then have your server queues here. Um, you can see what is going on um, in these different areas. Basically, the aim of Infinite Lagrange is to take over your star system, which requires you to conquer different cities, and you'll see that these are all about like trying to unify that star system under one union. Now this little button here in the bottom left as well, just above base, is your battle reports. So you can see what happened in a previous battle and um, how your ships did. So you can see that this particular ship here took a little bit of damage, but it was eh, we killed that Noma 330 lightly armored survey ship, no trouble. You can have a look at the battle stats, see the HP change, how ours barely went down and they just had no chance. And you can check what rewards you got. So here you can see that our uh, FG300 um, each, earned, well, the blueprint earned 2787 experience, which is useful for leveling up, which again we will cover in a future video. For the most part now though, what I basically want to instill in you is that you should be going through these quests. Go through all of these one by one by one, do everything, keep upgrading um, your chapters, keep going through the chapters there so that your mission, uh, so you get new missions, missions completed gives you resources, and you need to be trying to upgrade your base. The final thing to talk about the base here though, um, sorry I need to zoom back out onto the expanse, you see I've got like a blue glow around me. This is basically a shield, this is called the novice protection. And you'll see here there are two days, 48 hours worth of novice protection when you jump into a new server, that means you cannot be attacked for those two days. So that is kind of your race. You want to be making friends and being near your friends before the end of those 48 hours. Honestly, I've not been attacked on any of the servers that I've been playing on, but I have attacked other bases and people who essentially seem to be completely AFK and not actually playing the game. Um, so I've just destroyed those to get their resources. Now here you can see our fleets have entered battle. And early on, I always recommend that once a fleet hits battle, tap on it. 
hit view and come in and have a look at what is actually going on. Now here you can see that my three frigates currently are sitting at 99% HP. It says here down the bottom, and if I open up the ship list at the bottom right, you can see the health bars there. One of them's taken a couple of hits, but very, very minor damage compared to the small privateer fleet, which is already on 84% and dropping like a stone, 83% in the top left. And we can actually tap on this and have a look at it and watch it sort of getting shot at and see how pretty this game is, etc. But ultimately, the point I'm getting to here is just keep an eye on your percentage compared to the enemy percentage. In this case, I'm happy that we are going to win that fight, and I don't need to pay attention to it all that much. Let's have a look over here at Assault. And if we go to View here as well, you'll see that this isn't faring quite so well. We're at 92% compared to 90. That's because there's a Grim Reaper Assault Frigate in this and a Light Armoured Survey Ship. Now that Assault Frigate is going to do some damage to me. You can see that my Multi-Roll Frigate is already down to about two-thirds health um, and possibly is going to be destroyed in this one with how fast that is taking damage. I'm not going to worry too much about that early on because FG300s are very cheap and easy to build. Um, you don't want to just keep throwing fleets or you're just going to lose your resources um, into doing this. But it's worth just here accepting that I'm probably going to lose one of those. What I need is for that Grim Reaper to die. Basically, what matters here is the percentage of the Grim Reaper, and that's going down nice and quickly. It's the Grim Reaper that's doing damage, not the Noma. In fact, if we tap on here, you can see that if I tap on the Grim Reaper, it's attacking that ship, and we can see that the percentage of this ship is going down faster than the Grim Reaper, but the Grim Reaper is going down faster than my overall fleet, so that's good enough for me. That means that we're going to be able to destroy that Grim Reaper, and then we've only got the Noma to worry about. That's still shooting at that same frigate, so once the uh, Grim Reaper is done, this uh, first FG-300 is going to be taking a lot less damage and thus may actually survive this fight. You just want to have a look at this and see if the fight is definitely going in your favour. Keep an eye on it um, and if needs be, if we come back out to the Expanse, we can always tap on our fleet here and we can hit retreat and if you hit retreat you do get the option to cancel the operation that you're in as well and it's worth retreating if things are going badly like don't be ashamed to retreat that is it's no point just losing ships for the sake of it anyway so once this fight finishes here that'll be that next mission so let's just keep an eye out what is going on that small privateer recon fleet it's not far off dead let's tap in there Okay, whilst that's going, let's go back to our base quickly, and we're going to go into ship production. We now have enough space in the resource port to build another engineer, which I am going to rush through to completion, just to show you how to set up mining and the different things we can do. Now, obviously, it's worth noting that a small engineering ship can deal with level 1 or level 2 asteroids. That means I can tap a look here at the Deuterium Asteroid Belt, and yeah, a small utility ship, it says, requires small utility ship type 1. Can work on that, but if I go a little bit further afield, perhaps, like this one here, let's have a look, in this metal zone, that's a level 4 metal zone. That requires a medium utility ship, I cannot mine that one. Now, early on, yeah, sure, you can sit there and just have the one thing going out. You can start mining deuterium or crystal. You'll probably find that the two things that really actually cause problems early on are metal and crystal. Those are the two things you're going to want to get first. So I'm going to set a metal zone here, um, and then we're going to rapid formation, send out that utility ship, and he will then go to this point here and start mining that. It's going to bring me more resources. Now, later on as well, if we jump back into the base, on under the domestic affairs, you get the option to build a trading center and you can start trading resources. So like on one of my servers, I have an area, I'm sat in an area where I have massive deuterium and crystal gains, but very little metal around me. So I, I pull in tons and tons of the deuterium and crystal and then I just trade those. I swap them for, um, I swap them for the metal that I need when I need it. And it's a great way of doing things. Um, these have finished, so let's start upgrading these ones as well. There we are. Now, I intend to be building quite a few frigates, so that's probably the next best one to go for there, until at least this is completed in 30 minutes' time. Now, that mission is now done. We can clear that one, and that's now Chapter 2 complete, so we're going to go earn 500 UE coins, 500 metal, uh, sorry, 5,000 metal, 50 crystal, and 25 deuterium. Let's grab all of those. New missions. Oh, would you look at that? Look at that, we've got a load of these already completed because we're super smart and we've been upgrading things as we go. So now we just need to collect resources and obtain a stable resource. That's literally just now 
what we're doing. I've sent out that other mining ship. Away we go. I, if, I will send out more mining ships when we can. Look for space dust. If you find space dust in space, this is a great one early on. Your area will always have space dust. You see here, it brings in all three types. You get metal, you get deuterium, and you get crystal. Um, so finding somewhere that is a space dust um, is a great way of getting extra resources. Now, if this particular player, if it turned out that he um, actually is completely AFK and not doing anything and actually looking at it, I don't see any orange operations around. I think this may be a player who's not actually doing anything. We could theoretically actually attack his base, clear him off and then steal his space dust. But I can't do that um, until he has been removed. That's something worth bearing in mind. But as I said, absolutely, you want to be rushing yourself up to level three of your base um, so that you can build outposts and then you can relocate that outpost to your union. So do take a look at your union pages. Joining unions, you get all kinds of different things here, like they'll tell you whether it's in English, what languages they're talking, and um, whether approval is required, and um, what region they're based in. So you do need to be in the same region. I can't apply to the union because they're in region five. Um, I'd need to relocate all the way over there. Um, and you just get all of this to here. You can work out which of these might be worth going. Um, and you get the different administrative areas as well. Uh, all kinds all kinds of stuff there. Or you can even create your own union um, and figure out what you want to do. But there we are. That should be everything you need to know for day one. We've got that research on going. In fact, let's pull the FG300 um, ship type in here as well. Because I think this is the one that contains the armor variant. Let's tap in on that. Nope, not quite. But hey, we can grab all of these, some basic cannon tech, fire control tech, some research points, which we can use to unlock more ships later on. We're going to undo, uh, grab the basic torpedo tech, which isn't all that much use at the moment. And we are going to upgrade the tech points of the FG300 blueprint. So we're going to have that one running there. Anyway, so what, with all of that going, I think that should give you a good start into the game. Um, you've got now know how to build some fleets and get started in combat, how to start completing these missions, and as I said, join a union early on, find where they're based, build an outpost once your base hits three or four, whichever one it is that you can build outposts, and then relocate your base over there. People in your, um, in, in your union will be able to help you with that. Um, but for the most part, the main part is going to be reaching the level of your base that you need, which let me just double check which level that is. There it is, it is level four, Outpost Command Center. Once you have the Outpost Command Center built, you can build an outpost and then you can transfer your base there. But ultimately, the point I'm getting at here is that now you can see I've got everything set up and ready to go. Things are mining, everything's doing what it wants to do. Um, it's notable that my base cannot be attacked because of that timer. But my fleets, like the mining fleet that's out here, yeah, someone can attack that and they can destroy it. So it's worth just bearing that in mind. Um, just keep an eye, you know, log back in from time to time and have a little look at things. Anyway, folks, that does cover everything I wanted to talk about in how to survive your first day in Infinite Lagrange. I don't want this uh, video to go on for absolutely hours. We've had a brief look at the uh, UI. We've talked about how you should be upgrading your base and what you need to do in order, uh, what you need to achieve in order to do so. We've talked about how you actually get resources. Um, yeah. I think that really does cover it. If you do have any questions, of course, join the Infinite Lagrange Discord, join the Catskull Discord, or just ask me in the comment section down below. Anyway, folks, thank you ever so much for watching this one right the way to the end. Good luck out there. Be more than happy to give you guys advice and to help out in any way, shape, and form. Um, I'm looking forward to getting in with these guys here in this particular union. I think I can learn a lot from them and then share that all with you to give you the best start possible. Stay tuned to the channel, though. As I said, I have got videos coming on how to unlock new ships and how to upgrade them, um, that kind of thing. There'll be plenty of content for this game coming over the next couple of days and weeks. Um, so do stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Otherwise, thanks for watching, happy sailing, and see you in Infinite Lagrange.